Okay, loop chokes, one of my favorite submissions. We're gonna look to make a good grip here on him, yeah? So we're gonna talk about the important details. And first, I need to understand that my hand and his collar have to wrap around his head, okay? So very important is that we differentiate this between a loop choke and a guillotine. So if I'm gonna guillotine him, I'm gonna connect my hands in some way, doesn't really matter, and I'm gonna turn this way and apply. And I'm probably gonna fall on the same hip that my hand is grabbing, okay? But if I want to do a loop choke, it's actually, I'm gonna go the other way, and I'm gonna look to wrap my arm around his neck, okay? So, and also in the guillotine and in the loop choke. If I'm too close, it's gonna be really awkward to, to apply this. So I need a bit of distance, so I can easily set his head in the position that I want, okay? If he's looking down, this is the best, yeah? He doesn't want to look me in the eyes, doesn't like me. So it's, it's, it's a bit hard. Okay, I might need to sit up. But he's, he's here or I see he's a bit looking down, that's perfect. I have the hand in the collar, my arm will wrap around and I'm gonna push him towards this hand, the hand that will, I have the grip here. Now, I'm not gonna bend my arms, I'm gonna stretch my arms. And this now is choking, yeah? If I just stretch here, but I don't have any actual control. I just have the color around his neck. So I need to make sure I have some form of control with the legs. And when I set it up, I like to step on his hips or just monitor his legs or even his, his uh, sleeves or his biceps. So I then control the distance, okay? Now we're here. Now, as I go, I know most common reaction here and a nice way to defend is to go face up, okay? And if I don't do anything, he falls, and I, I, I'm not choking now, yeah, he's rotating, he might escape. So I need to follow on top, this is one way. And now as I mount, I keep stretching my arms to choke him, okay? I'm not gonna curl and do a guillotine, it's just different. Okay. So, this way. Set the grip, have the right distance, his head goes this way, my arms push this way, my hand comes up. And I'm here. Okay, now the choke is on. Now, I can follow him as he goes and mount him and start to stretch and apply, or I can block all that. How do I block it? I will trap his leg in like half guard, or I'll throw one leg over here. Now the rolling becomes very difficult, and now I can just stretch my arms apply as I block him. Okay. Let's turn the other way. The grip also can be thumbed down. That works nicely as well. Okay. My hand is up. And another detail on the grip is I find really important. If I'm gonna push his head like this, just resist a bit. Now I have to push my arm under. And my might be difficult. So I prefer to just use my forearm to push and now my arm can go directly under, rather than having to push and then push my arm. So I just go directly like this, okay? Now, I either gonna stop him from going, I can even stop with both feet on the hips, and it's also easier to follow, or I'm gonna trap his leg. You can put the legs like a guillotine, just fall on the other hip, okay? And fall here, okay? And actually, my legs are the other way from a guillotine. So if I do a guillotine, it for me was a little confusing and I think it's important to understand. I go here and my legs are here and then I'll submit him like this by rotating this way. Loop choke is the other way. My legs and my arms are all on one side. It's a nice thing to, way to think about. On the guillotine, my legs and my arms are here. On the loop choke, my legs and my arms are on that side. Goes up, choke is on, I follow or I stop him. If he stops here, I might be able to choke him. But if he puts his back on the floor, I need to follow and come up. Okay. Let's go. It's faster. 